guys. <clears throat> Whoa. Hi guys. Um, hello again. Welcome to episode nine of the Cozy Cardigans podcast. My name is Melanie, also known as Cozy Cardigans on Instagram and on Ravelry. So you can check me out there if you guys like what you see. Um, so it's been about a week since I've last talked to you guys and I got some stuff done, which is nice. And, um, what have I been doing? I've just been at home as most of us have been. Um, it's been knitting and reading. Um, finally got my knit, um, reading mojo back. For a while I had like this reading slump and just cause there's so much stuff happening as moving internationally, this coronavirus stuff happened and yeah, but now that things have been slowing down, I've been reading a lot more and I'm definitely using this opportunity uh, as in this self quarant not self quarantine but staying at home time to just read as much as possible. So I do have some reading updates to talk about towards the end after all the knitting stuff. So if you guys are interested in what kind of books I've been reading, um, stick around for that. But first, let me start on finished objects. I have one. And I'm wearing it. It's my twigs. So, so I didn't really properly block it just yet. It's just steam blocked, so it is pretty wrinkly. And my tension, as you can see, is a bit wonky when it comes to color work. This is my first um, color work project, so forgive me. But I love it. I love the the yoke. So, um, some mods. So, first off, you can probably, let me switch back a little. So, you can probably tell that this is a little bit or a lot smaller than most other people's, um, twigs. So, usually it would be, like, probably around here and it would be a full length sleeve, I guess, if you, if I roll this down, it's still a bit... Is this more three quarters? This is like a half length sleeve. I kind of like it rolled up. So it is a bit smaller. One reason is that my uh, gauge was a lot smaller than what was called for. So I'm not sure exactly what the, what the numbers are, but. Um, I used a uh, Knit Picks palette yarn. I have some extra here. Knit Picks palette with a uh, size US2 needles. And um, the thing is about this pattern is, if you guys don't know, um, it is only a one sized pattern. So you kind of have to fudge the gauge a little bit if you want to make it smaller or bigger and so I was looking for something a little smaller not as oversized as um, it looks when I saw the um, the pattern page so it worked so when I swatched for this sweater I noticed that my gauge was a lot smaller which is exactly what I wanted so I just knit um, as the pattern instructed with the smaller gauge and ended up with this um, size sweater. So obviously the sleeve is shorter, it's more cropped, and the width is a lot slimmer I guess you could say, but it is still a little boxy. It still has that shape that I really like that I was looking for. So I'm really happy with this. Um, so gauge was smaller also. As you can see, I used different colors in each of the color work sections. So um, I have this black part that I used for a lot of the more um, 
complex colorwork parts like this. And then I have this like burnt, um, like dark red kind of thing here. This like golden color here. And like this, I'm not sure if you could, oh, my hair. And this purple, darker purple color, like here. So the only rule I had for myself was that I wouldn't repeat um, two of the same color in um, next to each other so it looks a little more randomized and it turned out awesome. So I'm really happy with that. Um, I think I do really want to knit another one of these um, in the size that is called for just because I this was a really enjoyable knitting process I guess just the color work and like getting to the next color work was like kind of like well it was uh what am I trying to say um the color work was really fun um it was very engaging um the shorter color work bits were easy to memorize um the larger parts I had to concentrate a little more on but um, like this part was very like potato chippy, like I could read or watch a movie while I knit this, no problem. Um, there was some parts in the bigger ones where I kind of like screwed up and had to rip back a little, but it was okay. Um, I think for the next one I do want to make like a full length, full length sleeve. Um, I mean this big huge rib part is totally okay for me, but... I personally prefer like a, like this baggy type of sleeve um, all the way, like a full length versus like half length. So but anyways, this is, this is great though. I love this. This is, I mean, it's too late for winter. It is now like 80 degrees outside, so it's not the time to be wearing this right now, but I am happy that it is in my wardrobe now and it looks really good with like my high-waisted pants and stuff like that so really great knit so that is my twig sweater by Junko Okamoto um yeah I think that's that's about it so for this sweater I did end up having a lot of leftover skeins just cuz um, since it is smaller than what the size should be. I ended up with a lot more, um, I ended up having a lot more yardage or yarn left because the yardage mentioned in the pattern was definitely not what I used. So I was on Instagram and I can't, I was trying to look for who posted it and I can't remember. I mean like a lot of people have done this before so it's not really like something new but anyways after this sweater I was kind of like not burnt out but I wanted something a little different to do with my hands like not knitting which is weird I know but so I went ahead and um, went to my local craft store and just got like a really cheap crochet hook and started on this so it's like just a square right now as you can see so it's like a little crochet quilt thing and so what I'm planning to do what I'm hoping to do is so right now it's so this is like the center square and right now I'm in the middle of making the next like outer square so I mean it's a little, it's not a perfect square right now but so I'm currently using my leftover knit picks from this twig sweater just because I really like my color scheme for this one. So I was like, might as well just use it. So like for example, I have, I'm using the dark purple, black is in the center. And so, do I have, not my notebook somewhere else. But anyway, so I have like a little, plan in my notebook of how the squares go 
But anyways, I'm planning to make this into a little like quilted jacket thing maybe. No shaping, like just really simple like squares like just probably like one panel each side. Have it open in the front. Do the same for the back but close it obviously and then maybe like a short one panel sized sleeve thing going on maybe. I'm gonna wink it as I go but I mean I'll write down what I did so I can let you guys know but yeah so this is just like a little side project thing when I'm kind of tired of knitting but not really I still want to work with yarn kind of thing. So crocheting who knew I would crochet but this is just a little side project that I'm doing um yeah there's that and what else am I working on currently also working on chugging through my own Dawa sweater from Brooklyn Tweed so I finished the which was the front Finished the front panel, so this is what the front looks like. So, that. So, um, sorry, there's like neighbors outside. But, um, so this is what the front looks like. So, what you do is make the front and the back, and it's uh, knit the same way. And then you knit the sleeves, and then you kind of sew the top, and then leave the neck part open here. So, this is relatively what it would look like, which I'm pretty excited about. This yarn is, um, I am using Drops Lima for this. It's focusing. And I really like it. It has this really nice drape to it. It's very, like, kind of drapey, I guess, because it does get a little heavy with all the cabling and stuff. So I really like how it's, how it's flowing right now by itself, but I think it would look really great as a sweater and I'm really excited for it, but it's taking me forever because cables take me such a long time and it has like, uh, it's full of cables, so there's that. So I finished the front, I'm now working on the back. Just have this little inch. Hoping that I have enough yarn. I feel like I've used a lot more than I thought I would use. I did. I mean, I got the... I, I did get, you know, the yardage that the pattern called for. But I might have to order some more. We shall see. So, there's that. And, oh, another thing I'm working on is my plumpy shawl. So, it's very curly and not blocked at all. But I finished the, so I just finished this purple segment here. So I finished um, all the increases I had to do on... Um, this, this side, I believe. So right now I'm not decreasing, I'm not increasing on this side. I'm still increasing on this side. So it's still going to get a bit bigger. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be, but whatever. Um, so I just finished this, this brighter purple part using my own hand dyed. So that was the, the with this purple. I'm currently switching into this darker purple here. So I literally just started with the darker purple. I'm not sure if you could see that little line right there. So I'm, right now I'm doing this garter stitch part. But with this darker purple. And I'm really liking it so far. So this was using pretty much all the scraps that I had brought with me to Japan. Just because I don't have... I didn't bring everything with me. I didn't think I would be here for this long. I thought I was going to go back to America in like April. So 
Um, I thought it would be a little bit scrappy, but the colors are working out. So there's this, um, this gray part here that I showed you guys last time using, um, yarn I got from La Bien Aime in Paris during my honeymoon. And it's just, that's just this brighter gray right here. And then obviously this is the purple I was talking about earlier, my hand dyed. And then this rainbowy, so this is the wrong side, but this rainbow, this rainbow yarn is my um, hand spun fractal spin that I did with the uh, fiber from Three Waters Farm, 100% merino. So I have like this little bit left. I'm kind of thinking once I start running out of stuff, I'll just use whatever yarn of the four I have to finish it off. So this is the wrong side, which I think looks amazing anyways, even if it is the wrong side technically. So I love the rainbow stripes that the fractal made, but also looks really good as the the background of the brioche as well. And then this is with the yeah, that looks really nice. So I'm just chugging along with this too. Once when I'm like tired of cabling and also I don't want to crochet, this is a great brioche knit. And then one last thing that I'm working on mm -mm, is this. I'm in the middle of a row, so it's in a circle, but it's actually a cardigan. It's the, ew, what's it called? Mor Morcella cardigan. Morcella. Morcella cardigan by Whitney Hayward um, for uh, Harrisville. Um, so, can you, can you see? Nope. Yep, there it goes. So, it's a cozy cardigan. My name. I love cardigans. So, um, I'm using Knit Picks palette yarn again. This mustard color. And the pattern is really, or like the stitch pattern is really interesting. It looks like a rib, but it requires no purling. So, um, it's just technically a garter stitch, like in between, and this knit part is just a slipped knit stitch, so there's no purling involved, but it makes this really squishy, cozy, like, fabric, I guess you could say. Very slow going, because Knit Picks Palette Yarn. Technically it's fingering, but it's very thin, I feel like. So, but um, the stitch pattern is so easy to memorize. I pretty much need to knit this till it's like, what? Till it's really long. Need to knit it until it's eight and a quarter inches long which is quite a lot and I'm only at like one inch right now. So this is just like my when I'm out doing errands or if I need to um, take the train somewhere. It's just really nice to pop out and knit on while I'm sitting on the train. So yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm working on guys. Um, that's, that's about it. I think it's a pretty I usually only work on like one project or two maximum at a time so it's very weird for me to work on four but also at the same time I'm home all the time so I guess it kind of makes sense so yeah that's what I'm working on and probably I'm thinking I'm not gonna finish anything by next week I'm very slow going maybe the plumpy shawl I'll try to aim towards that but we'll see I'm also planning to knit my husband a cardigan, um, like a custom one. I I haven't seen any like unisex or 
yeah, unisex or male for male patterns that I, I have in mind for him or that he has in mind. So I'm probably going to make him a custom one and maybe make it a pattern. So we'll see how that goes. Um, let's see. I think that's it for knitting content. I didn't buy anything. I've just been knitting along and reading. So, yeah. So segue into reading, I guess. Um, what have I read? So I guess since this is the first time I'm doing this, um, don't really know where to start. I guess I'll kind of start off where, um, I guess I'll start from the last week since that's when I started, or yeah, that's when I started podcasting from here. So let me see. I am on my Goodreads. What have I read since then? I don't, I mean, I remember, but I don't really recall. Mm, okay. So, okay, so, okay, sorry. So one book I read, um, so I borrow a lot of ebooks from um, my library in LA. I still have the library card, so even though I don't live there, I still use it because the library here in Japan, they don't have a lot of English books. So I do what I gotta do. Um, so one book I read that I finished since last week is this book. Maybe I'll just, I'll just put a picture of it here. But it's called Ellen, Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine. And I gave it five stars. It was really good. It was not what I expected. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll link all the books that I talk about. Um, down in the description box below if you guys want to check any of them out. But I gave this one five stars. I really liked it. I think it was my first five star read of this year. Just because, I mean, I've only read nine books this year. Sorry, my memory card got full, so it stopped recording. But anyways, I was talking about... Eleanor Oliphant's completely fine. So first five star read of the year. Really enjoyed it. Um, it's about a young adult woman who is a bit quirky. No one really understands her. She doesn't understand people. Socially awkward. And she says she's completely fine. And she falls in love with someone she doesn't really know that's a big thing and um she finds a f someone who she might call a friend and she it's just you follow her through navigating this weird social landscape or not weird social landscape that she finds weird um and how she kind of interacts with people and things like that it's really hard to describe it's really good really enjoyed the ending um, definitely would recommend it. Really interesting. Um, another thing, so I also listen to audiobooks as well because, um, when I cook I like to listen to something and not have to, like, watch something because I can't really watch something I cook at the same time. Also, if I'm, don't want to look at any words but I still want to read and I'm knitting, the audiobook is like also a great way or if you have a hard time looking at a book and knitting at the same time I definitely recommend audiobooks as well because it's like you're seeing a movie in your mind kind of with someone talking to you anyway so I highly recommend audiobooks and they totally count as reading so um one audiobook that I read that I gave four stars, four out of five stars, is called uh, Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory. It's a nonfiction novel. It is a little dark um, for people who don't like to listen or read about death and dying. It might not be for you. Um, it's a nonfiction, it's science, so. Um, I graduated with a degree in biology, 
So I, although I don't have a career in science, I still do like to listen to kind of science-y books sometimes, and especially if it's like uh, entertaining. And this is definitely entertaining. This one is um, written by Kaylin Doty. And she is a mortician, and I'm not sure if you've seen her videos on YouTube, but she kind of does like a Q&A about um, her work as a mortician and like about what she thinks about death. And she has like a really great conversation about, um, I guess like, I don't know what you call it, death positivity, I guess. I'm not sure what the correct term is, but um, she kind of is a proponent of talking about death in a way where it's not something that is something to be ashamed or afraid about. And so I listened to her book. It's really good. She narrates her own um, book, which I really enjoy. And she's a great narrator. So I definitely recommend the audiobook because um, it's like the author is talking to you about her own work, which is, I think, is really great. Um, so this is a... <coughs> Excuse me. So this is um, kind of about her and how she got started in the death industry and how she became a mortician, why she got interested in this very weird line of work, like how she decided to be in it, where she got her start, how she, or what made her think about death in a different light, like why she is a, such a big proponent of being positive in this um, part of life that we all experience. So I definitely recommend her novel. Um, Nonfiction, but still very entertaining. So, and she's funny, so that's cool too. So that's another one. Another book that I gave five stars is a crime novel, crime mystery thriller novel. I think if you guys like mystery, if you guys like um, thriller, police officer chasing the bad guy, um, trying to guess who the bad guy is, that kind of thing, I definitely recommend this novel. It's called The Whisper Man. Um, by Alex North, and it is about, um, how can I explain this? There was a previous man called The Whisper Man, dubbed The Whisper Man by the media, um, oh, this is all fiction, by the way, um, who kidnapped and murdered boys. Um, so he's a serial killer, but he gets caught, um, but 20 years later in the same town, there is another spring of murders, um, that happen in the same style as the previous Whisper Man, who is obviously in prison, so didn't do it, so there's this new guy who the police need to catch, and um, put into jail for this. I'm explaining it very boringly, and you guys should look at the synopsis. Um, it's definitely, I read it in one day, because I was really into it. I really wanted to know who exactly it was. And also there's a lot of like, um, they follow you follow this family the single father who recently lost his wife and his son and how they navigate her passing and like they kind of get muddled into this whole business and it it's not just like a mystery murder mystery type of thing there's like family involved there's like you know what do you do when you just lost a loved one and how do you move on and like all these questions so it, it can be deep sometimes so and it, I highly recommend it. It was a great murder mystery. Um, so, yeah. The Whisper Man by Alex North. And another book that I read. Sorry, I read a lot of books. So, another book I read 
that I gave another five stars to. So I've been having a great, pretty great reading month this month. But um, it's called Your House is on Fire, Your Children Are All Gone. And it's a German novel that has been translated into English. Um, so <clears throat> I read this in two days. I could have read it in one if I knew about it. I learned about it from... I think I saw it on Goodreads and then I like immediately jumped on it. The ebook was available on my library's website so I got it and I read it and I started at like 8 p.m. a couple nights ago. Had to go to sleep so I finished it in two days but I could have finished it in one if I wanted to <laughs> and I really did want to so um anyways this book is weird and not for and I just want to flag that it does have um mentions of like uh abuse and sexual assault so if you guys can't read any of that or if you guys feel uncomfortable about it then I don't recommend this book to you but this book is really creepy and if you like creepy stories about creepy little towns and creepy people in those towns, I definitely recommend it. It's a very good gothic type of novel to uh, read when you're like cozy in your own bed. So um, this one's really hard to describe as well, but in a nutshell, it's in set in a small German town in the countryside. They're just in their own little bubble and everybody has a dark secret, pretty much. Like it's a weird town with weird people and weird stuff happens. And um, yeah, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. It was definitely my kind of novel, so. Would recommend if you're looking for a creepy read and um the last book i read is the umbrella man by oh i have this one here this one umbrella man it's a short story collection by road doll and if you uh aren't familiar with road doll he's the one who wrote um charlie and the chocolate factory and um Matilda so he also if you guys didn't know he also writes adult or wrote adult fiction as well and I really highly recommend his short stories they're really great um I do have a couple of other short story collections by him so I found this in a bookshop here in Japan so I jumped on it but um this is another really great collection. He writes weird, sometimes creepy stories that you don't expect Roald Dahl to write, but he actually does. So great short story collection. He has a bunch of them. So you guys should just find one and read it if you guys have the time or want to, but he's a great writer. He's one of my favorites. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I, that's what I read. Still reading some ebooks um, on my iPad. What am I reading? Just really quickly because I know I've just taken way too long to talk about my books. But I'm um, currently reading Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga to to Tokarczyk. Tokarczyk? Um, I have another another novel by her. This is another book by her, by the way, but this is not the book I'm currently reading. I'm planning to read this one soon, but it's by Olga Tokarczyk. I'm not sure if I said that right, but she is a Nobel Prize winner in literature. She did win the Man Booker Prize, um, so so far it's good. I'm only like on page 20, so can't really say anything about it, but we'll let you know the next time I film. So yeah, I hope that that didn't take too long to talk about. I feel like it was pretty much half knitting and half books this episode, but yeah, that was, that was it. I hope, let me sit down over here. I hope you guys are doing well. Let me take a drink. 
Um, sorry, side note. I'm going to be in Japan for another two, three weeks. And then I'm going to be back in the States for about a couple months. And then I'll be going back here in hopefully August if the coronavirus allows. Um, I'm going to go read now. I don't, sorry, I don't really know how to end these podcasts very well. But, you know, I hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing okay. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know if you're reading anything. Let me know if you've read any of the books I talked about. Let me know if you hated them or if you loved them. Because if you hated them, I'd like to know why. If you loved them, I'd like to bond with you. Um, so, yeah. I hope you guys have a great week. Or however long it is until I see you next. Um, but yeah. I'll see you next time. Bye.